And the second statement is this today. Number two, we've got to be willing not only to tell the real true gospel, but we've got to be willing to bear the offense of the gospel. How many of you realize that there's an offense to the gospel of Jesus Christ? There's an offense to it. I remember my own grandmother, Grandma Hendren, my mom's mom, told us how that when she was a girl, they were having a tent meeting on the side of town back in the day, all right? This is probably 60, 70 years ago. And the people of the town didn't want them there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they came, and, and all of, a bunch of people came, and they cut all the ropes and pushed the tent down. And as they were crawling out from underneath this tent, they all pelted them with tomatoes. But the funny part of it was when my grandma told me that, she stood up real tall and she says, I'm proud that they did that because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on. Is there anybody here that says they can say what they want to say? They can do what they want to do? Let me tell you something. I found something good and His name is Jesus. I found the answer. His name is Jesus. I found true life. I found true peace. I found true joy. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the gospel. It's good good news it's happy news but to those who reject the gospel you are not the aroma of life you're the aroma of death let me read what paul said second corinthians he says for we are to god the fragrance of christ among those oh i thank you who are being saved and among those who are perishing let me read, continue on. It says, To the one were the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. Je Jesus warned us in Matthew 10, 22. He says this. He says, And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. Wow. Wow. Don't be surprised if those who, don't, who reject the gospel aren't happy when you talk about it. Am I right? But let me tell you, here in the United States of America, we, we do not suffer for the gospel. We might get a little ribbing, a little, somebody might even lose a job for the gospel. I've even heard of that happen. Uh, you know, I know they call uh, Jose, he's not here this morning, but they call him, he works at Discount Tire, and everybody knows he's a believer, right? And so they call him Osteen all the time, you know? And uh, he, but you know, see, it doesn't bother him. He's like, call me whatever you want, man. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I believe in Jesus, right? Amen. And but in other parts of the world, let me tell you something. People die because of Jesus. They suffer persecution. There are people that are in prison in our world today because of Jesus Christ. They are suffering the offense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And someone says, well, how could the gospel be offensive? I want to give you some ways that the gospel is offensive, all right? Number one, first of all, the gospel claims exclusivity. Exclusivity. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you mean to tell me, Pastor Bob, that all of the religions of the world, uh, you know, that, that don't speak of Jesus, that, that they have no effect? Absolutely. Jesus Christ is the only way. I will declare that until there's no breath left in my soul. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Now, there's a woman, most of you have heard her name before, Oprah Winfrey. How many ever heard of Oprah Winfrey, right? She's one of the 500 richest people on the planet. She is a very intelligent woman in many, many ways. She, can, she understands how to make money, how to do things, and she has made a pile of money. But did you know that she is absolutely on record as saying this statement? She says, there is no way that Jesus Christ could be the only way. I got news for Oprah Winfrey. He is the only way. You can be smart in a lot of ways, but you can miss the mark completely because Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you a little story. A minister, a Boy Scout, and a scientist were the only passengers on a small plane, all right? The pilot, 
came back to the cabin and explained that the plane was going down and that there were just three parachutes but four people, all right? And the pilot added, he said, look, he said, I, I, I should have one of the parachutes because I have a wife and three small children. And he quickly grabbed the parachute and jumped out. The, then what happened was the scientist, the scientist spoke up almost immediately and this is what he said. He said, I, he said, I should have one of the parachutes because I am the smartest man in the world and everybody needs me. So he grabbed the parachute and, and, and he jumped out. And uh, so the minister turns to the Boy Scout and he says to the Boy Scout with a kind of a sad smile, you know, he said, well, you know, he said, I've lived a long life and I know the Lord and, and uh, you know, I'm not afraid. So uh, why don't you just take that parachute and go on I'll go down with the plane I'm not I'm not worried about it and the boy scout just looked at him and grinned real big and he said reverend just relax the smartest man in the world just picked up my backpack and jumped out you can be pretty smart but you can miss the gospel you can think you know everything but mix the, miss the gospel. You can have all of your intelligent arguments why there is no God, why all these other ways work, and you can miss the gospel. Hello? Come on. Uh, I'm just telling you, either Jesus Christ was who he said he was, or he was the greatest liar that ever walked the face of the earth. And I'm here to tell you that he absolutely is who he says he was. If you're looking for a revelation today, let it be a revelation of who Jesus is. Come on. He's the way and the truth and the life. Amen. Amen. I'm putting all my trust in him. Well, you say, well, pastor, what do I do if I meet somebody of another religion? I don't know what you can do, but I'll tell you what I do. I don't necessarily tell them, well, your way is wrong. You want to know what I tell them? I say, wow, that's interesting. Can I tell you what Jesus has done for me? And I begin to tell them what God did for my son Derek in one night. You see, Derek was stuttering not just on the beginning of every word, sentence, but on the beginning of every single word. And this preacher's heart was broken. And I went to the Lord in prayer, and I got down and I called out to the Lord. And in one night, I'm telling you, from Saturday night at 10 o'clock to somehow Sunday morning, he got up and he's never stuttered another day. Come on. And I'll tell them that story. And then I'll just say, I don't know about what your God does, but that's what my Jesus does. And besides that, let me tell you what else he does. He's forgiven me of my sins. He's given me a purpose in life. Oh, and I can just preach and preach and preach. Amen. Amen. Preach Jesus. How many know that's the thing to do? Preach Jesus. And then secondly, there's an offense to the gospel because the gospel claims that all men are sinners. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you go to the people on the street and you ask them, are you a good person? Nine out of ten, probably 99 out of 100 tell you, oh, yeah, I'm a really good person. Here's what you do. Just test them out. Just say, really? Well, do you think that the Ten Commandments would be a good, uh, you know, way to gauge how good of a person you are? They'll say, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, then have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah, maybe one or two. But what if you tell a lie? What does that make you? Make them say it. A liar. Have you ever stolen anything, even something small? If you've stolen something, what does that make you? A thief? Have you ever looked at a, a person of the opposite sex with lust in your heart? The Bible, Jesus said that if you've done that, then you're an adulterer in, at heart. I'm just going to ask you something. Why would God let a lying thief, an adulterer at heart, into heaven? I'm just telling you, you need a Savior by the name of Jesus. Come on. You see, we've got to get people lost before we can get them saved. And the good thing is that God has placed, God has placed the law, uh, the, the, the Old Testament law, as a schoolmaster that leads people to Jesus Christ. Come on. That's the Word of God. But you see, Satan is a liar, and he'll tell people, oh, you're just as good as anybody else. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how good you are. Let me tell you something. You Actually, Carlos tricked me the other day. I love Brother Carlos. He's always studying the Bible, going to theological museums and all kinds of stuff. And so he comes up to me and he says... Pastor Bob, how many sins does it take to make a sinner? It's late at night, okay? I'm not really thinking. I'm, I guess one sin will make you a sinner. You're like, no, you don't even need one because you're born in sin. 
You got to get up early in the morning around here. That's all I got to say. Hello. But you know what? We've got to get back to people understanding that it's their sin that separates them from God. Amen. And I love, I love the fact that there's a, there's a song, I came out of that grave. I love that song. We sang it all weekend long. But I was thinking about that song this weekend because it says, my sins was, were heavy. I needed rescue. But, but, but chains break at the weight of your glory. You know, we've got to get back to the place where the Holy Spirit is allowed to convict people of sin to where they feel the heaviness of their sin. And they say, I've just got to get right with the Lord. I've got to, I, I, I can't put this off any longer. I've got to straighten myself out because if I don't, I'm going to be in real trouble. Come on, aren't you glad for the gospel of Jesus Christ? And then the third reason why the gospel brings offense is because the gospel demands repentance and tells of a certainty of a coming judgment. Judgment is coming. Every person on the planet will stand before God, either at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're a believer, or the great white throne judgment, and you will stand before a fearful God. The scripture says it's a dangerous thing, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. And the, and the, and the Acts tells us this. It says, truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he is appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. I'm just going to tell you that I would, de- you, we need to be right with God. Amen. And men don't like to be called into account for their actions. Have you ever visited anybody in prison? It's amazing how many innocent people are in prison. Uh, sometimes they are innocent. But I, I visit a lot of people that I, I suspected maybe they weren't so innocent. Amen. People don't like to be called into account. And we have to understand that we will stand before a God. And a lot of people say, well, God is love, love, love. Yes, he is. But he's also holy, holy, holy. Amen. Get right with the Lord. And then number four, the fourth reason why the gospel can be offensive is because the gospel recognizes the authority of Scripture. Amen. This word is the truth. Am I right? 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And there are sometimes people say, Well, I don't want to hear about the Bible. It was written by people so long ago. It's old-fashioned. It's out of date. It doesn't apply to today. Well, I've got news for them because Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Come on. I'm just here today to tell you that God, what, what God has said is sin back then. It's still sin today. Every jot and tittle of this Bible is absolutely true. It's inerrant, inspired by Almighty God. And you can believe that this word is everlasting. Amen. Come on. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise today. And then the, the third statement that I have is that we cannot fall into deception from other Gospels. You know, there's a lot of Gospels being preached in our world today. Huh? Many churches, the true Gospel is not preached. Galatians 1, verse 8 and 9 says this, but even if we, this is Paul writing, he says, even if we, meaning himself, or an angel from heaven, preach any other Gospel to you than what we preach to you, let him be accursed. Wait a minute. Now, just so they get it, he writes it again. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what we have received, what you have received, let him be accursed. And there's a lot of people that try to preach different gospels. Uh, in fact, part of the reason for that is because people want to hear another gospel. Has anybody ever had to, had to itch your ear? Doesn't it feel kind of good? Just do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Scratch your ear. I know you want to. It feels kind of good, right? Just stick your finger. Oh, man. Oh. Itching ears. There's a lot of people have itching ears in our world. Second Timothy 4.3 says this, For the time will come. 
And by the way, that time is now. It has come. That was written a long time ago. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, which, which means sound teaching from the Word of God. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Wow. Uh, people don't want to hear the truth, so they'll find someone to tell them what they want to hear. Let me tell you, if I go to church and I hear a pastor, I want him to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. If I go to the doctor, I want him to tell me, sir, I'm sorry, we're going to have to amputate it. You got gangrene. Tell me the truth, man. Don't, don't play around with me. Just tell me the truth. I can handle it. Amen. That's the spirit that we got to have in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want the truth. And let me just tell you how these Gospels get started, okay? Any truth taken to extreme will lead to error. 